Get the ultimate experience in cleanliness and comfort without breaking the bank when you transform your bathroom with Niagara. From toilets to bidets, Niagara has the perfect solution for any bathroom project. Niagara's award-winning products not only outperform the competitors, they also outdesign them. Thanks to innovations like stealth technology, Niagara's environmentally friendly products can use only half as much water as their competitors, conserving water and saving you money. And there's more great news for homeowners. You can now shop for Niagara products on Amazon or HomeDepot.com. Thank you, Niagara. Welcome, it's another week with the big man, number 61, Nate Newton, and myself, John Radigan, as we both sit here anxious to get into our sports talk. And Nate, the name of the program is what? Let me tell you something, man, and we're going to talk about a lot. We're just going to talk in general about sports because I'm not going to fool you how I feel about the Carolina, I mean the Carolina Panthers. The Cowboys should beat the brakes off of them. It should not be a game. I mean, they may stick, uh, you know, first two series, but after that, we should just go to just, man, treating them like a stepchild, man, like Cinderella, okay? But, Rand, I ain't going to go there right now. Rand, what you want to talk about, Rand? What's on your mind, man? I know the Mavericks are 8-3, and three, but, well, hey, I, what's I, up? So, so much. So much. So <laughs> let's start Let's start uh, uh, this week, the Monday Night Football game, right? Everybody has had Buffalo circled on the calendar, like for the Cowboys, you know, that December 17th trip to Buffalo. And, of course, it still could be tough because there could be snow, right, tons of snow up there then. But – that Buffalo team does not look that formidable to me, Nate. It does not look like they're somebody we should really be that worried about, in part because somehow their kid who's so talented, Josh Allen, seems to have regressed. You know, he's always had a bit of an interception problem. Man, it, it seems worse than ever now. He you know, seems lost out and there. And the reason I believe is they lost his their offensive coordinator to the New York Giants, Coach Dayball, is that Giants head coach. And I, th- I think he's missing him, too. I think Josh is missing Coach Dayball. I think Coach Dayball is missing Josh. They were very good together. Uh, he always kept this kid in check. And, and you know, Raz, what bothers me the most in this league is once you make a dollar amount, all of a sudden coaches stop coaching. This kid needs to be coached. Uh, uh, when you're throwing one, two – interceptions every game, you're missing something. Uh, You can have elite talent and you can have a gunslinger's mentality. But when when your team is trying to overcome you, a great talent, they, they tried to win this game anyway without him but he just would not let them win the game. He, one interception after another interception, yeah. he has a uh, fumbling problem. Uh, what he has over 200 touchdowns running and receiving over the six or seven years he played. But he also leads the league with over 90 turnovers in that same span. Right. Right. Yes. And that leads it by and so far. So when you're dealing yeah. with a kid yeah. that is going through some mental issues, and I, and I ain't talking about, you know, where he need to go see a, 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 you know, a specialist. Yeah. yeah. I'm talking about on that field. They just kept when you were, when you were that star. They just kept the camera on him, and you saw no uh, fire. You saw with each interception, you saw a little bit leak out of him, mm-hmm. a little bit, and no one, no one came up to him, no one patted him on the shoulder, no one. And I'm saying he needs coach the ball, uh, die ball from from the Giants, somebody to step in and say, "Hey, son, this is how we are gonna fix this," because he thinks he's the running game. He thinks he's the passing game. And you know what? It don't work that way, Rad. You got teammates. You got great players. You got uh, uh, what digs at wide receiver. You got the, uh, the little running back, Cooks, James Cooks. You know, you got a nice tight yeah. end. But all of a yeah. sudden, you just think that you can put this thing on your right arm. Well, Emdor is a great right arm. I don't think it's going to work, Rad. If he don't change his mindset and how he look at the game, it, it, they're going to continue to fall, Buffalo is. All right, so uh, that actually brings up a thought to me. I wonder, 
you're talking about even, you know, a great player needs to be coached. Yes. You need to keep coaching him. You know, this kid's, what, five, six years in the league. You still got to coach him. Did a guy like Nate, late in his career, I mean, mm. like, uh, I meant like Troy Nate, did he did he get coached a lot? Uh, at the end of his career, or did he even need it? This is a Hall of Fame dude. I realize not everybody has that talent and, and, and works that hard. But were there still dudes out there coaching Troy Aikman or Michael Irvin, another Hall of Famer, late, late in their career? The, these guys work so diligently on their craft. I used to see Michael Irvin and Troy a, 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 a throw a pass during practice. And it didn't. If it didn't feel right to Troy, uh, if it didn't feel right to Mike, we'll they'll run it again in practice. And if it still didn't feel right, Mike said, "Hey man, we gonna need to throw five or six of those out to practice." Or Troy said, "Hey man, just get with me out to practice because we gotta we gotta fix this, but we gotta finish practice now." Uh, these guys always working on their steps and their release and their timing to make sure that they're on the same page. Uh, Coach uh, Norv Turner, you know, a lot of times yeah. I know Coach Turner will hear me say, you know what, Norv, you're, I'm glad you got a head coaching job, but ain't no greater coordinator, or offense or coordinator or quarterback coach, I think, in the world. I think well, whenever he touch a quarterback or he's ahead of our offense, I think, he, you know, if he got the players, things going to click. And that's what Jimmy demanded – that his coaches do. Coach your players, know your players, interact with your players so that when we get in game type situations, they won't feel like they're on an island. I felt like that kid during that game, whether he chose yeah. to be or whether the team just gravitated away from him, he, he seemed like he was on an island. And when you're a great player like that, you can never be on an island. Even the best players need help during a game at some point in time because it's all players. What did, what makes Josh Allen different than say Herbert at the Chargers is success. Success makes you and success breeds confidence. And when you're confident, sometimes you have to be put in check because you'll go to throwing them wild balls all over the field, throwing in the double coverage. Oh, I can get this ball in there. Oh, I got the arm. Everybody's told me I'm great. And when you start believing that and not reading the defense, not taking that extra time or moving around or just throwing the ball away, you get these uh, ugly turnovers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the other thing that I, that's been on my mind a lot this week, Nate. There's a lot of people still, and I get it, you want to talk, Cowboys all the time, right? And when they beat the when they beat the Giants 49 to 17, it's kind of like, yeah, yeah, great game. I mean, you know, whatever. It's all good. You know, da-da-da. There's not much to say. Right. So now they go to looking, right? Mm -hmm. People, the the talking heads and the and the writers and stuff, they go to looking and they go to saying, okay, now if Philadelphia loses to either, you know, whatever, Kansas if they City, lose to Buffalo. either uh, Kansas City or yeah, or Buffalo or what, then the Cowboys win and this, that, and the other. And now you'd have a tie. For the and so it goes down to you know head to head competition and I'm like man no too early we're at halfway point we're just starting the second half of the season am I wrong about that are guys in the in the locker room like doing that nah, or, or what nah. are they thinking the, the better coaches in the league won't let that happen the better players in the league won't let that happen uh, we we talked off air and I and I, I'll tell anybody this you know and I'm dead serious when I tell people this hold hold on one minute brother Rad. I, Forgot to do yes, something. Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm going to light, I'm gonna light this brother up a little bit. I'm going to light this brother up a little bit. Oh, yeah. look yeah, at that. I lit myself yeah, up. You're, yeah. Oh, you're so man, bright. Let me tell you something, man. You cannot uh, look across that fence at all, at all, until after Thanksgiving. You are in the meat of your schedule. You have your four or five or six games where you're learning who you are. You're trying to find a rhythm. You're trying to find the identity of your team. And then from six, from games, say seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, you're in the meat of the schedule. And, and, and your only thing is, regardless of whether that's soft, the, that schedule is soft, or whether it is uh, a tough opponents, you got to get on a four or five game winning streak. And in that winning streak, it don't matter who you play. 
You can play a Philadelphia, a 49er, a Seahawk, a uh, Detroit. You have to beat those teams. You have to be, at some point in the season, you have to have an invincible feeling. And uh, we had three or four that when we was on our Super Bowl runs, we would have at least two times in, during the season where we would have that feeling. But, man, we can't be yep. beat. And I've never, and, and Coach McCarthy, before he got here, I've never seen that run uh, where you say, man, the Cowboys are invincible. You know, because they'll wind up losing to a, a team that they shouldn't should never be on the field with them. Or they'll Arizona, lose to a team yeah. that's, uh, I like to say, above, two games above 500. You know, Rad, I don't know which one is more important. Baseball, two games above 500. Or football, two games of 500, above 500. But I know out of 162 games, you need to be way, way above more than two games above 500 because you're not going anywhere. But in football, right. you can have a bad season like the NFC South is having. Yeah. <laughs> and you can get in with one win above 500. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Know, two games, yeah, you know. So, I, I, we have not beaten, what I'm trying to say, we have not beaten a team that's been two games above 500. And I don't know when. Yeah. Okay. You yeah. know, much less, much less seven games above five hundred at eight and one. <laughs> yes, like yeah. the Eagles are right? right. That's the first thing you got to worry about beating them head to head. I mean, there's no given. Um, so let's talk about Leighton Van Der Esch, the, the terrible news. Poor kid. You know, he he's going to be out for the year, and and his career might be done. Have you um, gone back and looked at the hit, the block? on the injury uh you know some people are saying it was a you know an illegal block in the back I, it didn't look um heinous to me but uh have you looked at it what are your thoughts on that brother i feel bad for Leighton and, and his family and all those that uh connected to him but let me tell you something man the block was by the left tackle by the uh the, the uh 49ers 49ers yep we call that throwing a, throwing a dude out of the club. I've had many blocks like that. And I feel so bad for Leighton Van Der Esch. But I will say this. Let, if we take the physicalness out of football, we might as well take off all the pads and join the Olympics and do some flag football. Because if yeah. every time somebody get hit hard, or every time somebody get roughed up physical, which the game's supposed to be, and we cry wolf and we cry sheep and we go blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Stop, man. <laughs> I, am, I am so sick and tired of announcers saying, that should have been a flag. That should have been this. Then when the ref throw the flag and they go to a review, this taking too long. This we we, we all we're never satisfied as fans. We're never satisfied as announcers. We're always looking for something as reporters instead of trying to push the game forward and have fun within the game. We always put a negative spin on it. it the game is going to have injuries like what happened to Layton and worse. The kid a couple of years at Buffalo with a heart attack. Yeah. He was back on the field yeah. this past. I, I, I'm, 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 yeah. I'm saying the game brings enough tragedy without us as talking heads adding to it. But nothing wrong. That dude just got was physical with Layton. Too bad. Very, very sad that it turned out this way. You know, it's just, but that's life. That's life. Yeah. You know, that's football. Yes. That's football, you know. So uh, because that and that you know that injury, it uh, was it um, Moose that mm. had that one. Is that the one he had yeah, too? Yeah, Michael Irvin. Uh, Michael yeah, did too. So, I thought so. Okay, that, and so that got them both out yes, the game. And, and <clears throat> I just tell people, ladies, right here. Uh, as soon as they get the kickoff out of the game, then they'll get the punt out of the game. Then all of a sudden we'll be lining up on the 25 on everything that we do. Then cha you know, how do you change possession? Oh, well, we, we don't want to punt. Let's just um 
Okay, let's start back. Okay, let's say if you own the on, on your own twenty, we'll we'll just place the ball on the other team forty five. I mean, you're just turning the game into yeah. you know a virtual reality thing. You know, AI yeah. coming anyway. What virtual intelligence that that's coming anyway. So next thing you know, we won't even know if it's real football players out there or just something they done created. You know, they don't ruin yeah, Hollywood. I'm about to say they don't ruin Hollywood. Yeah, those you know. Yeah, those AI those AI players won't get a, a next stenosis and all nah, that stuff, will nah. they? Yeah, nah. So I, yeah. I just, I, yeah, you know, and, 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 you know, I'm, I'm being a little funny about it, little, cracking a little jokes, but uh, virtually any team that decides to be physical win games. The one thing the Detroit Lions have always had talent, you know. Maybe not a team full, but they've always had high quality talent. At, you know, Megatron, Stafford. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I can't think of the great uh, tackle that came from the universe. Uh, you know, uh, Sanders. I mean, they have always had great talent. Yeah. But what separates them now is they're physical, they're yeah. tough, they're mean. And if you take away. That right there from Detroit, you would not have a very good team. Same yeah. with, yeah. Same with uh, the 49ers. Take a word of their toughness, and they're not a very good team. And yep. so, interesting. Buffalo, they are a tough team. Now they, their quarterback has hurt them, but Buffalo <laughs> normally is a physical team. Uh, they they have lost a little bit of that the last few weeks, but. That's who some teams are. When we run into the 49ers, it ain't that we worry about their talent. We worry about they ain't no ain't no bit of quit in them. That's what scares everybody because yeah. it ain't a bit of quit in them. Yeah. And they're physical and they can finesse, but their 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 main thing is being physical. Yeah. So uh how worried should I be about the uh, trend of the Cowboys' defense right now? Now, first of all, losing Leighton Vay- Vander Esch is a big deal, obviously. They already lost Diggs, obviously, earlier in the season. But uh, it just seems like this defense, which at the beginning of the year was dominating, you know, it seems like they're fine now. It doesn't what, what, seem like they're dominating. The, the um, am, is, am I seeing it right or not? Uh, number 95. <laughs> Is I, I can't think of my kid's name, but uh, let, let me let me get this right. Let me. Jonathan Hankins is doing a hell of a job. Gallimore number ninety six is doing a hell of a job. Osa Ozui Digger Diggy number ninety seven is doing a hell of a job of of stopping the run, along with Demarcus Lawrence, Darren Armstrong. These guys are stopping the run. Mm-hmm. And when you stop the run, that makes it better. Uh, that makes it easier for us to have Marquise Bell and other guys up in there, that linebacker position, uh, Damone Clark uh, at the linebacker position. They're trying to bring in Richard Evans now, who's 10 pounds bigger than uh, than, than Marquise Bell. So that that is the key. That is what has kept us stabilized is that we have not – Given up uh, more than 110 yards in these last two or three games, you know, and we haven't given up a hundred yard rusher. But to me, a hundred yard rusher don't have no value in my new NFL, uh, you know, because if you wind up with 175 yards rushing, it don't matter who got him. If it was one guy or, or five guys, 172 yards gonna almost dictate a loss for the Dallas Cowboys. So they have been able to keep. Right. Guys, right around 100 yards a game, or, or so, and so uh, that's been big. That is why our defense is playing well, uh, being uh, taking advantage of the opportunities. You know, Bland got another interception, so he's taking advantage of the yes, opportunities that are presented to him. And uh, you you have to continue to play for tomorrow. That's one thing about a coaching staff and a scouting staff is they see the game and they prepare for the game today, but they always looking, trying to see what they can add or what they can tweak for tomorrow because teams will catch up with you quick. And when they catch up with you, they can put you in a slump. You know, you can go in a slump real quick. Yep. 
that's what the Cowboys have to avoid, right? How devastating, because they're, yes. they're great at home, the Cowboys, right? 8-0 in the last couple seasons yeah, yeah, already 12, at home, right I think. Eight, 12, eight, game, eight or nine game winning streak. At the crib. Oh. 12 straight. 12, yeah, 12, 12 game, game winning streak. streak at home. Yeah, okay. But they're but they're they're mm. two and three mm-hmm. on the road, okay? So they're going on the road this week. How devastating would a loss well, there on, be? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. They're going on the road, ain't they? Are they home this week? Yeah, yeah I they thought are so. going on. Yeah. I'm looking at them. Man, I don't, know. I, I don't know why I think we was playing the Panthers at the crib. I don't, man, thank you, Ray. <laughs> I had to look at my paper. I got, got it written. You'd have been. You'd have been in the wrong spot for your your uh, your pregame show. No, you no, it's still the the same spot. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny, man. Yeah, <laughs> but Rad Chuba Hubbard is they running back, the backup the guy that, that Oklahoma State guy. Uh, Miles Sanders is the other running back. Uh, DJ Chalk is the receiver. Ray, I think me and you will put up a better fight than them. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, okay. I, I, I like it. I, 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 I wish I could uh, lie to the people and make these guys great or make them something special. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, hey, Bryce Young, first pick, you know. Not, not, not even Carolina saying we need to fire the GM because they go CJ Stroud over at Houston. <laughs> yeah. yeah, boy, no kid. So I mean, yeah. it's just amazing how things work, uh, and it leads me back to one thing: is New York. That's the first. The Panthers is the second. Washington is the third. Now, me and you can look ahead. Me and you can talk about it, not 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 the Cowboys. Washington is not a good team. Right. Uh, the Seahawks are and is yeah. a good team. Yeah. A well-coached yeah. team a, and got a defense that would knock your head off. We have them at home. It's no uh, – you know, people laugh. You know, I do other little shows. People laugh because I would not give Carolina any respect. I, I, I'm not. and I, I didn't give New York okay. any respect. New York was – we beat them with their full repertoire, 40 to nothing. I was hurt yep. when we let them score the other day. Do we yeah. have a lesser quarterback. The offensive line, offensive line is hurt. You trade away Leonard Williams, and we let these dudes score – 10 points. We shouldn't have let them score not eight points. They first, the only points I felt they should have got was in the first. I would have kicked the field goal if I was them. That was dumb on coach, day ball. And, and that, yep. that I would have punished them after that. I wouldn't even let them score nothing. They shouldn't have, you know, they shouldn't have got, what, they were 0 for 12 on third downs? Come on, man. Come on, man. We supposed to crush these dudes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. I like it when you tell me something, Nate. Yeah, I, well, well, yeah. Every time you say, let me tell you something, you say about 10 times a show, and I like it. That's my favorite part of the show. Yeah. Hey, hey, we did another one, Niagara. We appreciate you guys so much. And, uh, man, it's been fun as always, Nate. Your thoughts, your insights are really cool, really special. I hope the viewers are enjoying this thing as much as we are, man. Thank you, Rad. You have a best, blessed day. Tell your family and everybody we say hello. And get better Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi.